Well, just a quick one on me. I'm Cassin. I am the owner of Kudos, but it's just me. So I just run a solo <laughs> recruitment business, uh, specializes in .NET. Um, so if ever you want advice on the market, salaries, insights, uh, just give me a shout. I'm very approachable, so hopefully everyone will agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, it's lovely to have Peter here. So Peter has actually, I think you were there from the first event, right? Yeah, yeah, very January first event, absolutely, and, yeah. Um, you know, really pleased that Peter's done, I'd say maybe four or five talks for us. Yeah, yeah, years, not sick of me yet, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You're the one I go to when I, 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 need, I need speaking. speaking. <laughs> but, um, and obviously it was great to hear that Peter received his MVP award uh, recently as well. So obviously congratulations Thank you very much. Um, I, obviously I know all the work you've done in the community, not just with me, you know, obviously with other boo recruitment companies that oh, you yeah. do talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's great because you obviously are somebody that does give a lot back to the community in the region. You're, you're always learning and you've always been there to give me help and advice whenever yeah. I needed to as well. So thank you. No, and, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the event. So we'll have Peter on first and then we've got Andy who's come up all the way from Bristol. And um, so we'll do Peter's talk. We'll maybe have like five, ten minute break and then we'll get to Andy. But I'll see if anyone, if you've got time, if anyone's just going a little bit network. Welcome to do that. So I'll hand you over to Peter. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk, uh, Writing Windows 11 Widgets. So I'm Peter, and as Kasson mentioned, I was recently awarded the Microsoft MVP Award, yes, finally, uh, for .NET and Windows development, uh, which we're covering basically both today. And it was thanks to events like this one where I got that. So it's great to sort of be able to give something back as well. But I've definitely learned a lot from events like this. So it's nice to have that and hopefully you know make the most of it and you know do lots more for the community um i also write posts about events like this i'll be literally writing up the next talk as well as my own i've done that already <laughs> and i also have my own podcast as well where i've talked about windows 11 widgets if you want to hear me talk about them again but in less detail you can hear it on my podcast but i'm going to go a bit more in depth i've also got tutorials talks and workshops on my website tutorial.com and you can find me on linkedin and all my repositories are on github and i'll put the code up later so today i'll be talking about windows 11 widgets how to design them how to develop them i'll also show a demo and there's a chance to ask any questions but feel free to ask at points if you want so let's talk about windows 11 and widgets so windows 11 if you don't know is Microsoft's latest and most powerful Windows operating system, helping you get things done with many thousands of applications. It's optimized for productivity, so you can use Snap Assist, which helps you snap your windows, to help you keep organized. There's also Dev Home, which is great for developers. It's like a central hub for all the development features that are in Windows now. Uh, Windows 11 has some great gaming features with reality rivaling game graphics. And there's also some elevated entertainment experiences as well. Um, can't not mention AI. So <laughs> Windows 11 is enhanced with an AI-powered co-pilot, and that can help kickstart your creativity or act as an intelligent assistant. So if you want to know what's going on with Windows right now, you can just go to windows.com. What about widgets? So widgets themselves in Windows 11, that enables you to have quick access to any features or information at a glance without needing to open an application or a website. The widgets board is your central hub to stay organized and save time. There's widgets for calendar, news, weather, whatever you want. You can also customize your widgets as well for your location for the weather, for example, so they're personalized to what's important to you. Um, they can be interactive, so you can engage with content directly. Or dynamic as well, where you can get real-time updates like the latest weather, latest traffic news, that sort of thing. And widgets are being updated with new features, and all of those features are available with a click or a swipe on the widgets board. So let's talk about how you design widgets with adaptive cards. So adaptive cards are basically a platform-agnostic UI snippet based in JSON. It's actually used in other applications as well, like Microsoft Teams, Viva Connections, and widgets as well. Widgets not just in Windows 11, but Dev Home as well, because Dev Home also has widgets. Basically, with adaptive cards, you can exchange at a glance content with templates that use text and images, and you can create interactive experiences with actions as well that you can submit. 
You can create templates for adaptive cards using the drag and drop designer. And there's elements for card structure and properties for a schema of an adaptive card. So you can make them look like however you want them to. You can even preview in the designer how they would look in the widgets board. And you can have different sizes from small, medium, and large. And you can also have light and dark themes. So you can see how your widgets would fit in that way as well. And you want to check out the designer or the documentation or the samples, there's a few samples available. You can just go to adaptivecards.io. So adaptive card schema, that's basically a JSON structure and it has card elements, containers, actions, inputs, and types. So I'm not going to read them all, but there's card elements that include text block for text, image, as well as media and media source. You can even have videos in your widgets as well. Um, you can also have containers, which can arrange information in an adaptive card. So you can have a column or a table, or you can even have a fact set as well, which is like for key value pairs as well. Um, there's also actions which enable um, interactivity. So you can toggle the visibility of items in a card. So you can actually make the, card, the adaptive card interactive. Um, you can have inputs as well that can be submitted from an action. So when you submit on your adaptive card, and that can be a text input, a number input, a date, or a time input. There's also types which include a background image. So you can have a custom background image for your widget. And there's some other types as well for other hosts that use adaptive cards as well. The different sizes you can have are the small, medium, and large. So I've got a weather widget example here in the three different sizes you can have. Um, and basically, developers can deliver widgets in all three sizes or any combination they want. So you can have just small or large, for example. And you can support multiple themes as well. Adaptive cards can actually be designed and output using ChatGPT, very versatile AI. You just need to ask it, create an adaptive card for a visually interesting Windows 11 widget. ChatGPT can help you create the content and implement the ideas you want for an adaptive card. You don't even have to understand the schema. It'll do it for you. And you can basically create a Windows 11 widget from that. You can craft your prompt to create your ideal adaptive card. And you can even add actions or emoji. Just tell it to include emoji in the one it creates. Why is that going on? <laughs> Much being the mention of AI. <laughs> Last time, didn't it? Is he going to have a break? Technology. Who tap it? Yeah, I think that it was doing this last time, wasn't it? I don't know if you went last time. That's all right then. <laughs> I know. As like, as long as it happened before, I don't mind. Exactly. It says it's Sony. It's not Microsoft. It's fine. If it was a Surface Hub, I'd be more upset. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey. Just imagine the slides, maybe. Well. Just yeah, draw it. There we go. I'll just, I think it's just that one, so I'll do that again. All right. Should we pick it up seamlessly? <laughs> That'll be amazing. It's like a jump cut to me. Yeah. Edit yeah, edit it. It's a bit of a jump cut. No one will ever notice. <laughs> so let's pretend that nothing ever happened. You can craft your prompt to create your ideal adaptive card from ChatGPT, including any actions or emoji. You can output your adaptive card easily by adding, do not return any non-JSON text or numbering to the prompt. So you'll get an actual adaptive card out, not just ChatGPT's idea of, of what an adaptive. It'll do it and say, here's your adaptive card. We don't want that. Just output it as is. 
And you can try it. You can try it right now. You can go to chatgbt.com and say, create me in a, a Windows 11 widget. It'll do it for you. You'll get the adaptive card part at least. So yeah, give that a go. So developing widgets with Windows App SDK, something I've talked about before. So what on earth is Windows App SDK? So Windows App SDK enables you to build modern native Windows apps using WinUI 3, targeting Windows 10, RS5, or 1809, and later, right up to the current version of Windows 11 that's out right now, and future versions. Windows App SDK is decoupled from the operating system, so it's delivered on a regular basis every six months from NuGet. And the last version just came out recently, which is 1.6, and the next version will be out in about six months' time. So a pretty regular cadence that you can rely on on those features that you've been waiting for. Windows App SDK supports the WinRT APIs, which are kind of the newer APIs, and, as, and it can also support the native Windows APIs as well. And it implements Microsoft's Fluent Design System, so everything looks nice and Windows 11 y. Uh, Windows App SDK can be installed with the Windows application development workload. So if you're installing Visual Studio, there's literally a box with this logo on it. Tick that box, you've got it installed. That was just added recently before you had to go in to tick an, an extra option, but that'll give you everything you need. Um, but to find out how to get started with Windows App SDK, which you can use with C++ and Win32 if you prefer, or C Sharp with .NET instead. Just go to aka.ms forward slash WinApp SDK. What about .NET? So .NET, if you didn't know already, is the free and modern open source developer framework from Microsoft. It enables developers to create powerful applications for cloud, mobile, web, and desktop. .NET and C Sharp provide a platform and programming language that evolves to meet the needs of developers with releases every year to add new features and functionality. In fact, the next version of .NET is due out in November, .NET 9, which will add some functionality and features. Windows App SDK developers can leverage the latest .NET and C Sharp capabilities to create applications and use the world-class developer tooling with Visual Studio 2022. Uh, developers can also create cross-platform applications in .NET and C Sharp, so you can share a common core between applications on iOS, Android, Linux, macOS, and Windows, where you could then leverage widgets. You can get the latest .NET SDK, which comes with the latest version of C Sharp, at .NET. So, Windows app SDK applications can become a widget provider. You just need to implement six key methods from the iWidget provider interface. So this interface has a method for create widget and delete widget. That's basically when you add or remove a widget from the widgets board. There's on action invoked when one of those actions happens, so you can respond to that. There's on widget context change when the size change, so that you can actually deliver a different widget template for the different sizes, or you can have a responsive widget. Um, activate and deactivate is when the widget board is not interested in updates from your widgets. So basically when the widgets board is dismissed, it, can, it will tell you. So if you're doing something in real time, you can stop doing it. And then when the widgets board opens again, you can start doing it. So you don't have to keep running something in the background if need be. Um, but applications can also implement iWidget Provider 2, which is another interface that's been added, which adds just one extra uh, method, which is the on customization requested. So basically widgets can have a customization mode. So say for any configuration settings, so you can have a completely self-contained widget with its own settings accessible from the widget itself. You just respond to this event and you turn it on with the is customizable flag in the application package manifest. But if you want to learn all these things, you can go to uh, aka.ms forward slash widgets dev docs and that'll tell you all the different things you can do. But iWidget Provider 2 might not be necessarily mentioned as some of the documentation doesn't necessarily include that, but that is an extra method. They say six key methods, and it's actually seven now. So the package manifest. So Windows App SDK package applications have what's known as the package manifest. And if you're writing your own widgets, you must register these widgets using the package manifest. 
So you need to modify it to add some new sections. There's a section to add app extension, including a name, which has to be com.microsoft.windows.widgets. It has to be that name. It can't be anything else. And properties you need to include for the widget provider itself. So you can, you can define some icons. So that's what would be shown when you add the widget in the widgets board. And you also include the class ID of the widget as well. So you're writing it in code. There'll be a GUID effectively to identify your application. Use that same GUID and you'll be fine. There's also the definition of the widget. So that's its display name. So how it will actually be shown in the uh, widgets board. And it's got options like is customizable as well. Um, there's also um, allow multiple, but I don't think that works yet. I think that might be coming in a later update. But at the moment, it's, it's customizable does work. You can also uh, support some different capabilities of a widget. So that's the different sizes. So when I mentioned small, medium, large, that's how you tell Windows those are the size you support. And then there's some theme resources. So you can have your icons. We can also have screenshots as well. And they're fully localizable as well. So you can have localized screenshots of your widget in any language. And you can also have them themed for light and dark. So you could have it in French, light and dark, English, whatever you want. But modifying the manifest should be the most complex thing when developing widgets. But it's not. There's tons and tons of code that you have to put in. But you don't really need to do that because you've got this, the commensys.toolkit.windows.app.sdk package, which is my package. And that offers some useful features for Windows App SDK developers with some controls and extensions, but most crucially of all, support for widget functionality. This package basically ramps all the classes and methods that are developed by Microsoft, making implementing widgets much, much easier. Developers just need to inherit a widget provider base with a simple lightweight class, just providing one attribute with the GUID of their application, the same GUID from the manifest, and that's that part done, pretty much. And then there's also a widget base as well, uh, which is another simple lightweight class which you can inherit when you build your widgets yourself. So you've got those two classes to build that. And you can install this package from NuGet, and it's fully open source. So source code on GitHub. And there's also an example widget as well to help me get started. So you don't even have to worry about how to get started with widgets. I've got a really simple example there. So we've got the widget provider base, which I mentioned, which has all seven methods rather than the actual six. And there's also some extra methods to make registering a widgets a little bit easier. I'll show that in the demo. And there's also um, the widget base, which basically echoes those same methods from the widget provider. So that's where you'd also, and there's also a get template for widget and the get data for widget methods. And that provides the template, which is written in adaptive cards, and the data, which is just JSON data. But when widgets go wrong, there's a small possibility that when you're developing widgets, something might happen. But don't worry. If you have any problems, just uninstall your application from Add Remove Programs, and that will probably fix it. Once it's installed, deploy your application. You might need to restart, but that will probably get your widget up and running. If your widget looks like this, you might have a little bit more of a problem. So if your widgets go blank, you've broke your widgets board, <laughs> basically. So how do you fix it? Luckily. You just have to uninstall the widgets board and reinstall it. Um, this will probably not happen. It's only happened to me a couple of times. You'll probably be fine. But in the unlikely event this happens, you just run this command, this win get uninstall command. That will uninstall the widgets board completely. I've uninstalled the TV as well. <laughs> I didn't touch it. Didn't touch it. I saw about things going wrong. That's quite ironic. Sticky tape, that's what you need. Uh, I think it just does it itself. All ah, right, fair enough. There's no reason for it to come out. So. Yeah, OK, cool. So if you run this command, this will uninstall the widgets board for you. You just have to run this in a PowerShell uh, session uh, running as administrator. Then run the its counterpart command to reinstall it. 
and that will get the widgets board completely back to normal. In fact, it'll put it back to its original state when you first installed Windows 11. So actually, if you're like, I don't know what widgets I actually had in the first place, it will put them all back to normal. So, but this is a really edge case. This has hardly happened, but if you do do it, it's like, you know, what do you do? So this will get you out of that situation, but the first one will probably work. It's only if you get blank widget syndrome, then you do need to do that, but it's highly unlikely. But just, just, just that you know, just in case it happens. So let's see a demo, but hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> Any questions for now? No? no. If you're wanting to hand them to other users, What's the story as far as the certificates? Yeah, it's just like a normal Windows application. So you basically push, publish it to the store. So you publish it to the Microsoft store, just or as an MSIX, just the same as any other Windows application. You can actually, there's actually an option, I didn't mention it in your app manifest, we can say don't add it to the start menu, because there's no point in it being there, because there's no UI for it. So yeah, you can just install like a normal application. So if you go to the Microsoft store right now, or there's actually an option in the widgets board, you can launch the store and it'll tell you what all widgets are currently available. So there's a few in there already, but if you want but to deploy them, just the same. You just package it up, give them the MSIX, install it, and it, that's all they need to do. They don't have to do anything extra. And then for a Microsoft Store application, it's again, just the same. So yeah, that's a good question, yeah. The deployment scenario is exactly the same as a normal Windows application. The only difference is putting that extra stuff in the manifest. That's, and using my toolkit, hopefully, as well. Anything else? Cool, okay. So what we'll do is I'll show the, hopefully, the, um, the designer experience. So it's me this time. <laughs> there we go. So this is the uh, designer. So it's all written in JavaScript. You can actually, there's actually an SDK for this designer. So you want to build your own widget designer experience. You can totally do that in JavaScript. Um, so this is how it is. It just basically gives you a sample card. So you can basically create a new card and you get some templates. So we'll pick um, a completely random one. It's totally not one I've done before. <laughs> so pick this one with some ninja cats. So we've got like a score here. That's Probably American football, given the numbers there. We've got shades versus skins, but that's not very good. That's like, that's not what the teams are called. So let's see if we can adjust that. So what we'll do is we'll adjust the, um, these things. So what we can do is we can use data binding expressions. So we can do, I think it's uh, home team. And let's see, so now it changes to Navy, because that's the name of the home team. And then I'll just, Copy and paste that, and just do the away team. There we go. So now we've got the data being bound here. And if we wanted to have the team be called Newcastle, it updates. So I just update the data rather than the card. So in theory, I could have my application deliver this JSON payload with this widget. Uh, template, sorry, and that's what it would look like. That's what it looked like on the bot framework, but we're not doing the bot framework, we're doing widgets. So we can choose our different outputs, um, and we can choose widgets board. So this is what it would look like, but it doesn't quite fit. So we would probably do a, a medium widget. There we go. So that's what it would look like on the widgets board itself. Say you want to do the dark theme. So that's all handled for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So basically the the styling is designed so it'll invert automatically. So as long as you're using the adaptive cards, you don't have to think about, oh, it needs to be white when it's dark and black when it's light. That's all taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. So it's pretty easy to use. There's plenty of samples as well, so you don't have to worry about getting started. So you can either just drag and drop, or you can edit the JSON directly if you want as well. So if you're feeling brave, you can edit that. But that's probably... That still seems a bit too hard. So as I mentioned, I can get AI to do it for us. So what I'll do is I've got myself a prompt here. Just and I'll pop it into ChatGPT. Now, as well as well, everyone knows, 
AI is unpredictable, so I can't guarantee what the results of this will be. But let's do it, because we're brave. So what we'll hope will happen is we'll get a very slowly written piece of JSON. So this is real, so I'm not, this is real ChatGBT. Nothing's canned. And I've asked it to produce a widget congratulating me on my MVP. Because why not? There we go. So let's see if this is actually right. So let's copy it. So let's copy that in. I'll put it straight into the designer. There we go. Isn't that great? Hey. <laughs> it's made up this, though. Let's take out that. It's hallucinated an image. So I'll just take that out so it looks a bit better. There we go. And it's actually produced the Learn More link that actually is real. <laughs> so it's, this is the actual MVP website. So it's understood my intent. And yeah, it's produced that widget. So I could pin that widget to my, if I built a widgets provider, I could then have that as my widget. So yeah, so we can use AI to build our widgets. So very good. Cool, cool, cool. So far, so good. So what do widgets look like? So this is the widgets board. So I've got three widgets here that are from my custom application. I've got custom widget, counts widget, and we've got something else as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off what we can do. So I've got this application here. And what I can do with this is I can send the template and the data to, that, to one of those widgets. So we've got a template up here. Now I've got a template that I just generated, haven't I, with ChatGPT. So if I put that one in there, save it, there we go. There's my widget. So that's being, so that template could have been delivered directly from the application and I'm done. So the complicated part, getting that widget designed, is the, really the complicated part. That del actually delivering it there is, is relatively straightforward with my widget provider's toolkit. So we've got another example as well which is our counter. So it's at zero, it says zero there, which matches here. And we can do um, this, so we can increment the counter. Count is going up, five, six, seven, eight. There's six here too. So you're probably thinking, no, that's not too clever. But this is one instance of the application. The widget is a different instance of the same application. So when the widget's running, it invokes the same application in the background. So this is another copy of the same application. So I'm using inter-process communication to send the data between the widgets. That's a bit of an extra bonus. So it's just a, a named pipe, if you want to know. So I'll, I'll show the code for that. Um, but yeah, so we've got a widget. So this one's like a, I guess you could call it a responsive widget. So it says rendered only of medium, for example, because it's in medium mode. Let's make it smaller. So it says rendered only of small, so that I could have a completely different design for that widget in small size or large. So it could be so it says rendered only of large, so I could have a completely different layout, either dynamically or I could swap out the template completely because there's an event for that. Remember when I mentioned there's that context changed event, so I can actually completely deliver a completely different template payload or be responsive, so you've got the choice. And if you did happen to spot it, this one's customizable. So it's got the customize option. So I turn that on in the manifest, and I can customize the widget. And that then delivers a different template for the customizing mode where I can reset the counter. So it's currently at six. Just make sure it is. I can then reset the counter. That resets it to zero. Now that's reset to zero. So we've got, and it's bi-directional as well. Do a higher number, so it's see, that's ten times. So I can communicate from my application to the widget, or from the widget to my application, very easily. So last but no means least, we've got our third mysterious prompt widget. So what I'll do is I'll create, copy this again, and we'll go to this one. And this one's what it currently looks like. I can sit my prompt in there and click generate for the best. A bit simpler this time. I can save it. Hope it doesn't crash. 
it did. That's all right. I think I missed something off when I when I did that. So I'll I'll debug it so you can prove it's real. <laughs> but we'll get that running in a second. So this is just debugging the same. It's exactly the same application, just debugging in the debugger. Any questions at this point while I'm waiting for that to spin up? I can show you. So they can basically go to their, go here, buy more widgets. They, they just get it from the store. Um, no, but they could deliver it as an MSIX. You could deliver it like any, so any application you're deploying internally as a Windows application, you can ex use exactly the same method. The only restriction is it has to be a packaged application. You can't do a self-contained application. It has to be a packaged one. But that's, but if you just give someone the MSIX, they can install the widget. And then it can use whatever internal systems you have. You know, the code behind can use anything you like. The widget's just, the look of it, but the actual functionality you can do whatever you like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dashboards are ideal. Oh, this is a slightly better one this time. So let's save it. I ah, see. So what I did is I added some validation, so it can tell me if these widgets are actually valid. I think this might still work. But I'd have to after regenerate it. So that validate is just a NuGet package. It's just an adaptive cards for .NET package. Let's try this one. Great, it's valid this time. Brilliant. So it's changed this. Not as good as the other one, but you never know what you might get. Ah. Just plug it back in. All right. Hey, I've got, I'm, I'm dab hand at this now. So I've been fixing widgets sometimes as well, so I should get used to this. But the widgets are stable as, you know, I've, the toolkit I've got cuts out a lot of the potential problems you might have got. It was edge, yeah, it was edge cases mostly when developing and debugging, you can just catch it in the, but it's, I've only encountered it a couple of times, I only included it just in case it happens to you. It is highly unlikely. The adding remove is probably the only thing you ever need to do, but because I was, yeah, not when they're using, no, no, they're reliable when you're using them. It's just, you know, when you're deving about, you do something and it's, and you can sort of cause that situation, but it's a really unusual, but I just wanted to tell, in case it happens to you, basically. So we've got it working again, but there's another option here for an endpoint. What can I do? So we've got three endpoints we've got. We've got cat facts, Chuck Norris jokes, or a random joke. What, what do people fancy? Chuck Norris has got to be, hasn't it? So I'll choose that one. and see what it does. Ah, I'll have to wait just a minute. Sometimes I use it up. Well, I can explain what's happening here, at least. So what that does is it feeds that endpoint into a pre-canned prompt uh, to basically tell it to generate. You can even see create an adaptive card. I've got to told it exactly what to do. And it'll output a template for me using that endpoint to, and then actually feeding the data in its context so it'll produce the right kind of widget for me. So let's try it again, see if it'll do it. See the demo gods may not be on my side today. Nah, okay. I'll try a different one. This was the most risky one, to be honest. So there we go, this one worked. So it's basically saying, so you can actually see this one a bit better, for those who are here, is, Says, I won't read the whole thing out, but it says create an adaptive card with this valid schema from this endpoint, only using fields from this endpoint because it hallucinates extra fields when I was playing around with this. <laughs> uh, 
which returns this data. So I give it an example of the data that comes back. I just say, and then I say, do not return any non-JSON, right? So it returns valid JSON and a valid adaptive card. So it's not quite valid, so I'll have to regenerate it again. Because it does, it does do it sometimes. Yeah, I'm just asking it to do it again, yeah. Yeah, so most of the time it works. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it, uh, it can be a little bit flaky, like AI. There we go, this one's valid, brilliant. So what I'll do is I'll save that. Widget valid, yes, brilliant. And we can see our cat back widget. It's actually included the length parameter, which is quite funny, because that's actually being returned in the API. So it's got cat fact widget, a commemorative tower was built in Scotland for a cat named Towser. That's brilliant. Uh, let's click the refresh button. Oh, I got, so I get the next cat fact, right? So all I'm doing is pinging the API and getting the data and feeding that in. Not into the model, it's pre, so that's already, that's baked in now. That card will stay that way. And I'm just using the, so I told it to add a button called refresh. That, and so, I, so every card it generates has that refresh button. So when I hit it, the code says, go get me the code, get me the data. I'll show that. But there you go, you got a cat fat widget. You can refresh as much as you like. No, so it's not calling ChatGBT over and over again. It just does it that first time to create the cat fat widget. I'll probably give the, I'll give the Chuck Norris one one more go, and then I will show you the code. Chuck Norris is too, I'll try and I'll try it one more time. But yeah, oh, there we go. Yes. And it's valid. Nice. There we go. So we got Chuck Norris, joke of the day. And again, it's got that refresh button because I asked it to. So I can just click refresh. But yeah. So all I'm doing is feeding in that prompt into, the, into ChatGPT's API. The reason why I have to add the context when I didn't have to do that before is ChatGPT by default will go and look at the link and get the context for you. But when I do it here, I have to provide the context because the API doesn't, have, doesn't access the broader internet unless I give it the information it needs. But other than that, you can do it quite easily. But enough of actually the running it. Let's have a look at the code. So actually, this is the pipe provider. So this is how I do the inter-process communication. So I just have a name pipe, send data from one, receive it from the other. That's it. And it's as simple as that. Nothing really clever going on here. So this is the, so this is the actual, this is some code for the provider that just does some incrementing of the number. But I'll show you the code for the widgets. So this is the counts widget, which is reasonably complicated. It's got a configuration template. But there's not much to it. I mean, this is the on action invoked. This is when I press increment. I just add one to the value. Reset is when it's in the configuration mode. I just set it back to zero. And I've just got these where I get the template. So if it's in configuration mode, I return the configuration template. And when it's not, I don't. It's a really simple. But there's a lot more code you have to write if you're doing this yourself. That's where the package comes in handy. That's why I wrote it, to make implementing these widgets a lot easier. With the package, you only have to do one thing. For example, the uh, widget provider itself, this is it. This is all you need. So that class, I, that class ID and this class, that's, that's all I need to actually declare my widget provider. And then to register it. Is this? I'm using dependency injection in here, but this is it. So this is this add where that's the method I wrote. So basically, you tell it what widget you want to add. You can pass your class in to new it up. And that's it. And then you call register provider. That's that's all. That bit of code is all you need to actually register the widgets in code. And to register the widgets in the uh, manifest. is here. So we've got our class ID, which is the same GUI. We've got our capabilities. I've got multiple widgets, because you can have multiple widgets. You can have as many as you like. I don't know what the actual maximum is, but it's, I've got three in this one. 
Um, and I've got, and you basically just say, what capability, is it customizable? So this one's customizable, for example. The assets, which I just have the one, but I could have ones for every single language if I wanted. Um, and they're just packaged in as resources, just like in a normal Windows application. So really, there's nothing too special if, as a developer. I mean, this is pretty much standard C-sharp code. Um, there is one little clever trick, which is because the application is instanced twice. So basically, normally, you would write like a, a console application or Windows service type application, basically. Yeah. An application with no UI as well as your own, but that's too hard. So why not just run the same application twice, but with no UI? So I've got this, just a flag on the command line for headless. So basically, the widgets pr provider will invoke my application, which I can show you where that is in here. So we've got this. So I tell it which executable it is, which is my application. I tell it, pass in the headless parameter, and then, in the actual code, I just say, if that parameter is it's not headless, show the main window. That's it. So now I can use the same, so it's exactly the same application the widgets board runs as what you saw. The only difference is I don't show the main window. But it's exactly the same code. The widget can be completely self-contained. It doesn't need a UI. But if you want a companion widget with your Windows app SDK application, you can totally do it. And just for fun, I'll show you exactly what you get hidden from you. So this is the this is my package. So these are all the things you'd have to implement in your own code. So you've got complicated code that's very complicated. And some of it uses native Windows APIs. <laughs> like I mentioned, there's some com stuff if you know com, right? There's some stuff like that. So we've got Visible things like this. So this is Microsoft's code that's under the MIT license, so I've just basically integrated into my toolkit, which also has the same license. But this is all their code, which I've just added some extra handy things because they don't do the registration thing. Um, but yeah, so you can build your own widgets really, really easily. The widget base basically just, you know, implement, you know, basically echoes those methods. I'm probably just knocking it. I don't know. I know that's why it's what's happening. Um, but yeah, so this makes it a lot easier. Um, you don't have to, you know, get scared by this calling unmanaged code, like scary, scary stuff. Don't worry about it. I've I've hidden that away from you. So you just basically use normal C sharp code. Don't worry about it. I take care of it for you. But yeah. So that's your. Any questions about the code? Anything particular? Brilliant. Perfect. OK. So as I said, let's start Windows 11. It's Microsoft's latest and most powerful operating system supporting those widgets with that at a glance information to save you time. And those widgets can also be written for Dev Home as well. So if you fancy writing your own Dev Home widgets, you can do that. You can design. Amazing adaptive cars with the designer and use that schema, or you can just use AI instead. Get ChatGPT to chat design it for you and get the output you want. You can get your nice design. You can then just edit it for data binding, and the job's done. You don't even have to think about it. You can develop your widgets really easily with Windows App SDK and .NET by implementing your own widget provider, which was made incredibly straightforward thanks to my toolkit, which makes it really simple really easy to use with an example widget as well to get you started. You can literally be up and running in minutes, and you basically just have to implement the code of your widget. You, don't have, you shouldn't have to do anything else, and I've made sure that you pretty much don't have to do that. And that was writing Windows 11 widgets. So we've got all the links here. Um, any questions now? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>